College football big game preview week number six brought to you by Tunica, Mississippi, the South's premier sports gambling destination. You can visit any of their six sports books and watch and wager on any of these games. Horseshoe, Samstown, Gold Strike, First Jackpot, Hollywood, and Fitz Casino. Nailed them. Didn't Boom. even look at a sheet. Ready to rock. Boom. Go get some more information over at tunicatravel.com. Let's jump right into the games. First game, Texas and Oklahoma. Oklahoma is a seven and a half point favorite. The over under is fifty nine. Saturday, eleven a.m. Fox at the Cotton Bowl in Dallas, Texas. Look, both teams are only two and three against the spread. Oklahoma averages forty eight point six points per game. They give up twenty three point two. Texas averages twenty eight point eight, but they give up nineteen point eight. Now, Oklahoma's offense—they're averaging six point one rushing yards per attempt and 12.7 passing yards per attempt. Texas is only averaging 5.2 yards per play. Not equal whatsoever. Uh, Both teams are only giving up 4.8 yards per play. Oklahoma, however, is giving up 100% scoring in the red zone. Texas is only giving up 70 on that. So that's that's one thing that kind of leans that way. Here's the other thing, though. Tom Herman... In his career as a coach, assistant coach, head coach, whatever, whatever staffs he's been on, 22-1 and against the spread as an underdog. You got to throw out all the assistant coach stuff. You can't give him credit for the other head coaches' maneuvers and decisions. I wish I knew what his numbers were as a head coach and then his numbers only at Texas. His numbers. Because what he did at Houston was pretty remarkable. uh, Agreed, agreed. Um he has, he's undefeated against the spread at Texas. His one loss against the spread as an underdog came at Houston. So, it's still good numbers. Texas is 5-0 and against the spread against Oklahoma in the last five years with two outright wins. Now, both of those wins came under Charlie Strong. Yeah, correct. So, um, look, this is a... It's a crazy game. The it's a rivalry o- game. These teams don't like each other. Yeah, they hate it's each It's going to be a 50-50 place. And it's a weird spot, right? Yeah, like it's at the Cotton Bowl? The State Fair. Like, always weird at the Cotton Bowl. You got fried Twinkies everywhere. You got every kind of whatever weird stuff going on. People walking around with body paint on and, and whatever. And the game starts at 11 a.m. I've never understood why I've they make it at 11 a.m. I've never understood they... Always make it an 11 a.m. game. Yeah, this, at one time, let's make this a night game and let's see what it looks like. I, I do agree with that because, I, I mean, I think it would be ma- – it's already massive as it is, but I think it would be even bigger. Yeah. And I know the ratings would be through the roof. Uh, how, I mean, what do you feel about this? How do you uh, feel? I like Tom Herman. I, this Oklahoma team has looked beatable, and it's only a matter of time before they slip up. I don't see them going undefeated. They're just not that great of an Oklahoma team that we've seen in the past. They're going to lose some games. I, th- I think they're going to lose Saturday. I'm going to have money on Texas. I'm, they're not one of my gambling picks, but I'm going to have money on Texas. I'm going to have money on money line for Texas. I think I like that. I, I've got this in my gambling picks, so we'll, okay. I'll get to that we'll here a little bit. let you get there later. Uh, game number two, LSU. Minus three at Florida. Now, these lines come to you from the Horseshoe Casino down in Tunica, Mississippi. The line currently on LSU, and of course, these lines will change. So, whatever we're giving them to you at right now. We record up, this on Tuesday evening. Go up and talk to your attendant. Okay. Yeah. Talk to the attendant. They will give you the updated line. I promise some of these are going to move. They're going to move one way or the other. Whatever. Whatever. Currently, pretty, pretty universal you can get this line at LSU minus two and a half. Minus two and a half? Minus two and a half. I literally looked before we came on at my bookie. Okay. All right, so it, we'll we'll say three. We'll just that's toss fine. it. We'll say three because that's what the horseshoe has it. And it might go to three and a half. Yeah, it might. It, it'll move all sorts of different places. The over-under is 45 and a half. Saturday, 2.30 p.m., CBS at the Swamp down in Gainesville. Coach O and the Tigers have eight straight SEC game wins against the spread. However, Florida is four and one against the spread this year. LSU is only three and two. Two teams that live off of turnovers. Florida is plus nine in turnover margin. LSU hey. is plus seven. Okay, you said Florida's four and one. Four and one against the spread. Okay, never mind. I thought you said four and zero, oh, and I was trying to figure out where that one game was missing, and then what happened in Kentucky. So 
Kentucky was the one that they did not cover. That makes sense. Yeah. Uh, Hard to hear. Apologies. Yeah, it's, it is what it is. Uh, they both live off turnovers. LSU is plus seven in turnover margin. Florida is plus nine. Florida has given up an average of 3.1 rushing yards per attempt versus Tennessee and Mississippi State. LSU has given up only 3.0 rushing yards per attempt all season. This game comes down to one thing, and I, I'm, I would guess you will agree with me. Felipe Franks, if he can make plays without turning the football over, Florida's got a chance here. Let, let's clarify that Florida plus nine in the turnover rattle. Six they of got, them came against Tennessee. They got six against Tennessee. Did they it's, give up any against Tennessee? I think they I gave think up two. one or two. But they, they got six. So, that, so they're they got plus four. Six. They got six in one game. They're plus nine on the season. They, nah. Yeah, they were they were plus four against Tennessee. And how many games? I want to know how many times LSU's turned the ball over this year. It ain't a lot. No, it's it, not. It ain't a lot. I don't have the number in front of me. It ain't they much. Did, they didn't turn it over at all last year. Not not one single interception the entire season. Is that right? Yeah. Yeah, that's, uh, yeah Danny Etling threw zero interceptions last zero. year. Zero. They Crazy. protect the football. Now, they're not an explosive offense, but they protect the football. They play great defense. They play great special teams. I think – I think Florida's in for a world of hurt. This is not Tennessee, and this is not Mississippi coming to your town. Mississippi State, sorry, Mississippi fans. No, I think you, I mean, this I think is, you're right. Th- these two are not like the other. LSU's offense has looked remarkably better. Yeah, better in the past couple of weeks, past few weeks. Um, Florida's defense didn't look great when they played up against a good, a decent offense. Not even a good offense. I'm not putting LSU up there with some well, what's, of the good what's offenses. What's crazy is that. Kentucky you know, moved the ball on them. How'd they do it? They ran the football down their throat. You don't think LSU's going to run the football down their throat? Agreed. Uh, I'm surprised that Mississippi State was not able to do that. But if you have zero threat of a passing attack. That's different. That's the problem. When you become right? one-dimensional, it's easy to beat. Guess what Florida is? They're one-dimensional. Yes. And and it still wasn't good enough for Mississippi State I understand State to that I am a homer. I, I am make no bones about it. I love LSU, I love this LSU team. They have caught me by surprise being this good. I don't think Florida has a chance. I was expecting this line to open up at 6, 7 LSU. I cannot believe I got it today at 2.5. I cannot believe. <laughs> I might lose a lot of money on this, but I'm going to lose a lot. They're going to have to take a lot from me. That, I mean, that, that makes sense. Let's move into game number three. I don't have a whole bunch of notes on these. I, I ran out of time earlier. That's okay. Notre Dame minus five at Virginia Tech. The over under is fifty five and a half. Saturday, seven p.m. ABC at Lane Stadium in Blacksburg, Virginia. That place is going to be bouncing. It is going to be loud. Alex Bars, left guard from Notre Dame, out with an ACL, MCL. How much does that impact the offensive line for Notre Dame? Ian Book has looked incredible. His God, numbers are through so the roof. Um, I mean, Virginia Tech. Like, was that Old Dominion game? Just a throwaway game. Yeah, just a fluke. In my opinion, it was. Let me tell you where this line's moving. I cannot believe. I checked it before we started tonight. Notre Dame minus six. It's moved a point in a day. Does that surprise you, though? It does surprise me because I thought I thought, I thought thought this guy, lane, line was going to end up around the field goal. Really? I thought I thought it was going to go Vitek's way because it's going to be a close game in Blacksburg, hard place to play. And I thought it was going to be close to a field goal. The fact that it's getting bigger makes me love Justin Fuente and the Hokies. I will tell you this. The I like Notre Dame a lot. That is a really difficult place to play. That is a really difficult place to play. But after, was it last season? Where Clemson went in, it, Virginia Tech was undefeated. Yeah, Clemson, but Clemson went in. was just way better than them. That's a different team, though. I wonder if Notre Dame is that much better than them. No, not close. Like if this is a team that we saw, I old think Dominion. Notre, I think Notre Dame is better. Okay. I know. Uh, like, you keep I, bringing I up the old Dominion game, and that's which fine. I think that's why the line is what it is because that's people good. can't seem to get that it's out great. of their head. Uh, I'm not going to touch this game. I'm not betting on this one because I I can't get Old Dominion out of my head because Ian Book... You're passing up free money. (laughs) You're just stepping right over it, sitting right there waiting on you. I I can't can't do it. Scare money don't make money. No, you're right about that. You're right about that. You you went 6-1 in your picks last week. I I can't say nothing. And then all the big games, I bet those two, 
hit every one of those. Uh, yeah, you did. Yeah, you did. Hit them all. Nine and one against the spread last week. Nine and one. I've been I've been gambling on sports since I was eighteen years old legally. Well, I don't know if that was legal, but <laughs> legitimately, for really, I've never had a weekend where I went nine and one on a Saturday. That's a you you were you were rolling. That has never happened before. I am probably going to take a bloodbath this weekend. Man, have some confidence. They don't they don't like too kindly you cashing that much money. Uh, you on them. you got that right. You got that right. All right, let's move off of that one. Let's move into game number four, Kentucky at Texas A and M. I, I have no idea what to think of in this game. On here it is Kentucky plus five and a half. So Texas A and M is favored by five and a half. Oh no, I am so sorry. Texas A and M minus six and a half at Horseshoe. Whew. Um Wow. That that took me by surprise a little bit. Over unders fifty one and a half Saturday six p.m. ESPN Kyle Field in College Station Texas. Look Kentucky, not a whole lot of a passing game, but enough to to have the threat there, right? And they got a front, a defensive front that is well, a defensive and an offensive front. Their well, yeah, their line is the really trenches good yeah. are bonkers for Kentucky this year. I don't know what happened. They are animals. Stoops, SEC coach of the year right now. Right this second, absolutely. I don't think it's close. I, no, it's not close. I mean, I, what he's doing compared to what everybody expected them to do. Well, I mean, it, on the other that's side. That's incredible. You, I mean, it, it, look, yes, on that, like, I, I would give some credit to Orgeron because yeah. people expected him to be 3-2 yes, I mean, and two at best. Right now, you're right. And maybe 2-3. and three. You're right. In order for Orgeron to win it, he's got to win one of the two big ones left. Yeah, he's got to beat Georgia or he's got to beat or Alabama. Alabama. He's got to beat one of them. Stoops does not even have to beat Georgia. Nope. Stoops, Stoops could almost just beat the teams he's favored to and lose to the teams he's he's a dog to and still win it. Pro- I mean, probably, probably. I can't believe what Kentucky's doing. I haven't given them enough credit. And immediately, my instinct was to bet against them this week. Just immediately, well, I, I think, was like, I think that's what's what a lot that of line? People. I really want to play A and M. They're tough to beat at home. And then the, before I could pull the trigger, I was like, "I, I, I just, I just got to right, step away because step away. You, you've done this no multiple yeah. times now." Uh, look, Kentucky is grown up. I got to stop the seeing them as Benny Snell is my for dad real. is Kentucky. You know, uh, what's the quarterback's name? Oh, come on now. Uh, uh, if I don't prepare Terry, for something, I'm not going to remember anything. Terry Robinson, Terry Wilson. No, I know his name. Terry Wilson. That's it. This yeah, is sad. It, it's ridiculous. Ridiculous. You, I'm sorry. Looking at me, you know, Kentucky I fans, I apologize. That's my fault. Uh, but either way, he, he no, he doesn't have a big arm. But he's got enough of a passing threat, that and, all, and he's that, got yeah, some wheels. Yeah, Terry Wilson. That offense is, is, is perfectly set up for him. That, that's why I think – Stoops is coach of the year. He has put them in position to do exactly what they're good at, avoid the things that they're bad at, and That's don't what coaches and don't make mistakes. Do. I mean, yeah, they can't play the game for them. Right. They're just trying to set their guys up for the maximum efficiency of success. And I don't think they could be more successful under any other coach with the talent they have and the games they've played. I think they have played to maximum efficiency. I think they have as well. I mean, it's just incredible. I, and I, I still think right. immediately wanted to bet against them. And I just had to say, you, you know why? I'm a what, fool. The reason I can't keep that is, it. is the name on the helmet. Like, you you can't get past. It's it's me with Virginia Tech and Old Dominion. Well, it's I don't know that. My thought is, is I but I really liked A&M going into the season. The only two games A&M's lost to is Clemson and Alabama who consensus are in, like, the number one in the country and a top five in the country. Like, Agreed. That's that's why it's so hard is I think A&M is a lot better than some of the teams. That, and I have to realize, South Carolina, I want it so bad to be good this year. They're, they're just not. They're just not. Yeah, they're just not that good. And, and, I, and you know how I feel about Florida. Now I'm crapping on Kentucky, and I don't mean to. I'm just going to stop talking. But look, even, I'm, even I've made past, this worse. Even in the past. Tried to give them respect, and I've made it worse. <laughs> look, I think Kentucky fans would at least appreciate the fact that you thought about betting against them and then had to back away. You, They've at least put that little seed in your head. If I bet against them, I'm just not going to tell nobody. Even if I win it, I'm just not going to tell nobody. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just going to Let's move on. Number five, 
Boston College at NC State. NC State is a four-point favorite. Again, these lines are coming from the Horseshoe down in Tunica, Mississippi. I'm really excited for this game, actually. Exa- I, like, I, I don't know how I'm it's fired. not getting a bunch of hype. I'm fired up for this game. I think Boston College is real. They're a contender in the ACC. They went down to Purdue. They beat up. They lost to a, a good Purdue team that was backed up against the ropes, threw the kitchen sink at them, beat them pretty bad, and all they did was come back home and take another W. Yeah, they absolutely did. Um, now, this NC State is team four. is good. Over-unders 59. Saturday, this is an 11.30 a.m. game on the ACC Network. Gonna score? See, I think this is going to be a lower-scoring tough game. Hold on. Did you hear what I just said? 11.30. 11.30 on the ACC Network, which means you have to stream it. Yeah. Nobody's going to be watching it. It's like game. the ESPN Extra Channel. Like, it's crazy. Carter Finley Stadium in Raleigh, North Carolina. They're getting no respect. None whatsoever. And I think that's going to play into this. We don't know what's going on with AJ Dillon, the, the star running back from Boston College. He uh he tweaked an ankle last week and went over Temple. Um NC State's a good football team, they, man. They, look, both of these are really well coached. Ryan Finley is really is good awesome. football team. I, I I it bothers me that they don't get more love in the ACC. I've kind of crapped on the big boys of the ACC. But that middle pack of the ACC, Syracuse is stepping up, BC stepping up, NC State has been there the last couple of weeks saying, "Hey guys, we're here." Man, I'm 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 excited. Yeah, I hate that I'm not going to find this game because I'm not I'm not watching. Yeah, you you ain't you ain't searching for a streaming. I'm, I'm still an old man. I'm if it's not on a clicker with a TV, I, that's, I think that's it. what the majority of people are. So, which by the way, off topic, I moved to YouTube TV this week from PlayStation View. Okay. How that changed your life. I am in love with YouTube TV. All right. The only problem that I've got right now is it doesn't have NFL Network. But I started thinking, like, how often am I actually watching NFL Network now? Well, the Thursday night games. Is now on Fox. Well, not all of them. Only eight of them. Right. But for now, it's on Fox. That means eight of them, you don't get them. Not yet. But, like, YouTube TV is working on a deal and whatever, and we'll see. Um, But we'll figure that out. I, I do have Verizon. So... I do get the Thursday night games on my phone, oh. and, and I can, you can actually stream the phone to a TV, and I can put it to the TV. So yeah, like that'll be fine. Uh, but yeah, YouTube TV for people that want to cut the cord. I go to your house and I try to figure out how to work stuff, and I'm just I feel like I'm see with the PlayStation View, it was almost impossible to to even find the game that you want, and with YouTube TV, it is a thousand times easier. So YouTube you TV go. should hit us up and advertise on this thing for me Gary, talking so much. They're giving away free promos. We don't leave do that. that. All right. So uh, so Took Boston College, NC State. College. I like NC State a lot here. I I looked at it, again the numbers that I use. No, that's fine. It says NC State should be favored by ten, and that's with AJ Dillon playing. We don't even know if he's playing, and. You I know. mean, it wouldn't surprise me if NC State beats them by two touchdowns. I mean, it wouldn't shock me. NC State's a really good team. Yeah. I just really like this Boston College team. And the downside, here's the hard thing about betting on Boston College is they're they're definitely, with this offense being as fast-paced and as high-powered as it is, they're a front-running team. If you shut them down and get them three and out a couple of times, it's over. Yeah. It snowballs on them, and they can't outrun it because their defense is on the field so much. They get worn down and the game gets well, out of how hand. About, how about this? If Temple didn't turn the ball over three times last week, they beat Boston College in Boston College yeah. last week. No, Well, Temple's a tough, tough team. Oh, agreed. No, so but I, I think NC State is too. Oh, oh yeah. T- t- no, NC State's way better than Temple. Let's, uh, let's move into the honorable mention right quick. We'll roll through these. Okay. Auburn minus four at Mississippi State, 6.30 p.m. on ESPN2. This was supposed to be like a, a battle of undefeated teams. Right, this was supposed to be two five and O teams, and look, State has scored a total of thirteen points in two weeks against Kentucky and Florida. The State hadn't scored any any touchdowns since the first quarter of the Kentucky game. Yeah, oh, I know it's seven seven quarters with no touchdowns. Uh, but on top of that, Auburn they're having like, issues. Where'd that offensive line go? That's, yeah, like yeah. I, they got some injuries on that offensive line. They look. Terrible right now. That offensive line, they can't rush for anything. They they got ninety six yards rushing against Southern Miss. Southern Miss gives up all kinds of yardage to everybody. Everybody. Auburn was able to get two yards of carry on them. Like Auburn tried to dominate 
by running the football, and they couldn't do it. And this has been three weeks straight that they have not been able to do it. I feel like LSU might have broke them. Like at the the Arkansas win that Auburn had, thirty four to three. Arkansas outgained them in that game. They outgained them on yards per play. Like they, it was the weirdest thing to watch. And if you go watch Auburn right now, like just the past three ball games, this ain't the same team that beat Washington. I don't know what has happened, but they don't look good. But Mississippi State hadn't looked good either. So this, you remember, this is the tenth anniversary of the three to two game of the three to two game. Tommy Tuberville and Sylvester Croom. Good gosh. Are we getting back to that? Nope. Can we can we get back to three to two? Nope. Cause I'd give everything I got to see this game I go know, to three to two. It's just such an Auburn hater. <laughs> no, it's not even that. Yeah, you are. It's not even that. Yes, you are. It is that would be They're getting the job. So done. entertaining. They're just winning. Games. It would just as as solid verbal does when they read the uh the have you listened to this when they do this where no. he's like punt, 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 interception. Punt, punt, field goal, punt. But, like, that's how I feel like this game will end up. I think everybody's going to be punting all over the field. Nick Fitzgerald might throw a pick. Auburn might drop the football. I mean, you got to pick in this game. If I had to pick, I'm going Auburn because I think State has looked that much worse. This is my gambling pick. But with this, this is one of my gambling picks. Okay. I feel that good about one of these games. Missouri at South Carolina, 11 a.m. SEC Network. I can't even bring myself to watch this game. Uh, Missouri is a two-and-a-half point underdog. I know. The line opened at one-and-a-half. The only thing I can hope for, rooting for South Carolina here, is that South Carolina just can't play against big physical teams and Missouri is not a big physical team. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's the only, I mean, that's exactly that, how that's, I feel like that is. That's literally what I have to talk myself into to make me not hate myself with, with this with this game and, and not be afraid of it. 11 a.m. kick, anything can happen. Missouri has uh, has won, like, every time they've gone to Columbia in the past, like, six years. I mean, it's crazy. So, not a, not, not a good sign for South Carolina. I really hope they hit this because, like, you and I both had South Carolina over eight wins this year. Yeah. So got to find so some we gotta, wins. We got to get the wins. Uh, Florida State at Miami, two thirty p.m. on ABC. Florida State is a thirteen and a half point underdog currently. It's not your daddy's Florida State team. This opened up what eleven and a half? I don't remember, but it was it was it's it was double digits when it opened. Yeah, it was double digits, and, it, and it's bigger. gotten it keeps growing. Uh, I mean, I kind of like Miami here. It's in my gambling picks. Okay, we'll leave that one alone too. <laughs> yeah, I like Miami here. Uh, minus thirteen and a half. I think anything under two touchdowns is is easy money on this because, boy, Willie Taggart. I mean, this this far in the season, he should have had it figured out. But they should have lost that game last week to Louisville. Last week, they should have lost to Louisville. Maryland Absolutely. at Michigan, eleven a.m. ABC. Maryland coming off their bye week. You would think, no, Maryland not coming off a bye. They didn't play last week. Oh, they played. They played uh, Minnesota, Minnesota, and they, they beat, blew them out. Yeah, they beat the dog mess out of that. Listen, team. this is. I'm excited. You, you to would watch think this, this would be a, a good game, right? But like. The past three years, Michigan has absolutely obliterated the, this team. But the past three years, Maryland wasn't as good as they are this year. I mean, I think you might be right. The line is massive. 17 and a half. The 17 and a half. Yeah. I thought about taking Maryland in this, but but looking at what had gone on the past few years yeah. and the fact they're going into the big house. I'm interested a in week, this game. A week after Michigan got taken to the brink by Northwestern, I think Harbaugh and them are going to come back and swing it. Yeah. Yeah. No. Uh, Iowa State at Oklahoma State, 2.30 p.m. ESPN2. This is the last of the honorable mention games. It. This is a fun game to just sit and kind of hang out and watch, right? If you weren't already watching LSU Florida or Florida State Miami, like this well, would be your 2.30 game because... Neither one of those two games are going to be fun to watch. I mean, LSU Florida might be. No, even if it's a close game, it's going to be ugly. No, I mean you're right about that. So it's not going to be fun to watch. It's going to be terrible. I think to watch. I think Iowa State and Oklahoma State could be ugly. It could be, but it's going to be high scoring. At least it's going to be scoring. You would think so. If LSU and Florida are close, it's because it's the three to two game. I mean, I I, I would put it closer to like the seventeen fourteen game. Or I don't, Florida ain't scoring fourteen points on this LSU. Let's, team. I mean, what what do they do? It was seventeen to sixteen last year and sixteen to ten the year before that. Like yeah. so, Florida LSU is probably going to be something like that. 
Iowa State, Oklahoma State last year was 49-42 Oklahoma State. I I tend to lean Oklahoma State here, but at some point I feel like Iowa State is going to break through and beat somebody that they are not supposed to. Well, I don't know that they're not supposed to write beat down a line on Oklahoma this. State because Oklahoma State hadn't looked great. No, they haven't, but they're still Oklahoma State. Gunny's getting some come uppins right now. I'm not real I'm not real happy with my boy the mullet. I could I could understand. You got that. a quarterback that wants to transfer, and he's put like a kibosh on the local media saying nobody can ask about it. If you ask about it, you're banned. If you ask another player, you're banned. Oklahoma State minus like eleven stuff. at home. Man, that's a big number. I would not have guessed that that would have been the spread. I would I'd probably lean Iowa State on that yeah, one. They I'm they not, tend to cover those big lines. Yeah, I'm not touching that, but I can't believe it's that big of a number. Oklahoma State hadn't looked that good. No, and Iowa State played really well at TCU. It took a last second field goal to win that one. Uh, yeah, that's going to wrap up our college football big game previews for week number six.